city of show you three different stories two are true and one is false all of these supernatural tales took place somewhere in illinois see if you can find out which story is the myth in the south suburban city of country club hills there is an area to the north called Knob hill the area is a mixture of vast plains and cramped houses a cluster of random disappearances have given this neighborhood a bad reputation. The knob is surrounded by two stretches of highway, so most teens walking home from the local high school have to pick between walking along the highway and risk getting hit by a speeding car, or walk through Dead Man's Ditch. Dead Man's Ditch is a ditch on the side of the highway, for reasons that don't need to be explained, it lives up to its name. In 2001, a boy by the name of Samson Gold was walking home late from basketball practice, exhausted and decided that taking the shortcut through the ditch would be a much better route than walking along the highway. He walked down the hill into the ditch and was never seen again. Many of the residents have forgotten about this disappearance, but not his brother. His brother remembers all too well. Man, I really miss my brother. He was hard-headed. Wish I could see him one last time. I miss him, for real. Mama told us to stay away from that ditch. She told us like a hundred times. Sad, he died. Wish I could see him one more time. <sighs> Some days I just miss my brother. We used to hoop together. We used to play the game together. I remember those times. And my brother, we used to play basketball with each other. <sighs> he was like Kobe and Shaq on the Lakers. He was like my brother, man. <laughs> I miss him. Local officers of the Knob Hill area have gone on record, saying that the random disappearances that occur are spontaneous and hard to follow. But they will do their best. A man by the name of Frank Shaver Allen, a famous architect from Joliet. Allen built different schools and residences throughout his career nationally. Allen had a house built for him in Joliet, Illinois in the 19th century. In 1904, Allen moved from the house to Pasadena. He ended his career in the 1910s and died in the 1930s. They say the, the house is haunted by many spirits. In the 1970s, psychics, reporters, and other visitors started to go to the Frank Shaver Allen House because there was a report of supernatural occurrences. The spirit of Frank Shaver Allen is said to still roam around the house as if it were his again. The spirit of an elderly woman is seen and is believed to be a past resident who had died of terminal illness. There was reports of the spirit of a young child who had gone missing but was never found, and a nanny who took care of the child when they lived in the home. There was a report that the child's spirit supposedly asked the boy who moved into the house if he would be their playmate forever. There have been unexplained illusionary fires seen at the house, and after renovations made, to the house, there was a rise in supernatural occurrences. People have witnessed shadowy figures, weird odors, voices, and screams. The house is still in Joliet, hidden behind many trees at the corner of Morgan Street and Dewey Avenue. In January 1917, 
woman by the name of Mary Hawkins who lived in Pendleton Hall at Eastern University, went up to the fourth floor of the building to play the piano because she couldn't sleep. That night, the janitor got into the woman's hall and assaulted Hawkins and left her for dead. Although the janitor thought she was dead, she wasn't. Hawkins dragged her beaten body down the stairs and through the halls, scratching the doors to try and get people's attention. She finally woke the counselor, who found Mary Hawkins' body beaten and lifeless. Residents of Templeton Hall say they often hear dragging sounds down the stairs and scratching sounds on the doors. They think it is the sound of Hawkins' spirit trying to escape again. They also report that they have seen bloody footprints in the hallway that vanish seconds after they see them. The counselor who found Hawkins was only a few years older than her. The counselor couldn't take the devastation of Hawkins' death, and as stories of Hawkins' spirit went on, she could not take the guilt anymore. The counselor had to be institutionalized and later killed herself in the hospital, in the hospital because of all the grief she went through. There have been reports of someone knocking on the doors and opening them, but no one is seen in the hallways. Others have had the same experience, but they had seen the ghost of a young woman. After the doors were mysteriously opened, they would close and lock, and televisions and radios were turned off by themselves. Some residents believe it is the ghost of the counselor checking up on the girls who tried to protect them from danger because she lost one of the students in her care. In the 1950s, people had heard hard knocking on the walls at night, which they thought was Hawkins making a presence known. In the 60s and 70s, people have heard voices throughout the hallways and have seen spirits that vanish quickly on the staircase. When I got to the room, you know, they quickly closed and locked the door and said that there had been some piano playing and a lot of what sounded like um, furniture moving up on the fourth floor. We notified our, our uh, resident assistant, Lisa, right away, and um, <clears throat> they called security to come out and take a look, but nothing was there. The door remained locked. When they, uh, when they went up there, they didn't hear anything. But later that evening, um, I can remember having to go down to the bathroom in the middle of the night and as I walked towards the bathroom there were um, glass doors in front of me and I could see a faint shadow of a white image on the door. There are also a ton of stories that occurred on the fourth floor. People have reported to see the windows open and close and lights flick. Uh, others have reported hearing the pace and faint sound of piano playing. All, all the old furniture and piano were up in the music room, and the room was locked up and closed off. your job to pick out the false stories. Email your guests to bdtv pth program at gmail.com and we will pick one person who gets the answer correct randomly to win a special prize. Thank you so much for joining us. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more entertainment like this and like the Bremen District Television Facebook page and don't forget to tell us which story you think is fiction. Tune in next time to see which creepy story is false. Until next time. <laughs>